need me to record anything? Or no, I no no no, I got it. And we are actually live. We're not live, but we're recording. Now, <laughs> I like to st- I like to do this man with everybody who comes on the show. I'm a man of class, and and it's kind of a tradition. But Joey, welcome to the show, good man. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. It's it's been a while since I've talked to anyone, you know, outside of my wife. Oh really? So. <laughs> That's the most 2020 relatable thing that I think I've ever heard. I know. In a while, that's, yeah. That's wild. Um, and my dog. My dog counts, I guess. I have full conversations. The dog, with yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, on record, when you say it out li- loud, it sounds mm-hmm. kind of weird. But we yeah. all do it. I mean, it doesn't yeah, matter sure. what you're. Yeah. We, everyone's done it. I know people who talk to lizards and monkeys. We're fine. Yeah. That's I mean, me. it's, a, it's a one-sided conversation, but... You know, it depends. It depends. You get full conversation though with a macaw. I will vouch. I've had <laughs> it. People look at me like I'm weird. I'm like, wait, no, it's a, it is a thing. It does <laughs> talk back. So it counts. does. See, see, see. Well, Joey, good man. Like, it's a pleasure to have you and an honor to have you here because you are a very. It seems. I mean, you are a very hard worker. I want to put it like busy. I know I say people are busy. Like I bring on people who are busy, like like mine, busy like myself, but. Sometimes I I said someone the other day was or actually a while ago was and they're like nah I haven't worked in a while like oh shit my bad <laughs> it's <'cause laughs> this pandemic like Ugh. but yeah. it seems like you're pretty busy and like a lot recently. Um, I mean I, I do what I I do what I can like I I have to stay busy otherwise you know <laughs> who knows what will happen but yeah but yeah I mean it's it's a weird time right now and the way that I've you know the way that I'm coping I guess a little bit is just to keep my head down and keep keep writing keep working keep doing whatever i can to just stay occupied you know it's true i mean you've done a lot of work though in the past comics and such like that as well i mean it's not like you haven't done anything and that's the way though a lot of people have been doing it, like you just mentioned though but a lot of people have been pushing through and i had this conversation with someone the other day was the best way to do to handle the world i guess you could say mm-hmm. is to just keep powering through and working through everything. I mean, because you're you're on the West Coast in America, like me, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm in LA. All right, so I'm I'm technically Southwest, but eh, it's fine. I mean, it's Arizona. Nobody wants to be associated with Arizona. <laughs> Very few people do. I have, uh, I have some good friends that live in Arizona. So great. really, oh, <laughs> I've been here seven years from Illinois, so I'm like, yay, nay. I've <laughs> I, I born and raised in the Midwest in Illinois for 16 years, mm-hmm. so I'm like, yay, nay on Arizona, but I'm positive negatives but so you're in america too so i mean that's the thing is like everyone's been talking about it is the best way to do it to get through everything is to just keep working no matter what it is even if it's only like for nobody it's just for yourself right keep it working it's like the best therapy one for right now and two it's the best way to get through yeah i mean i i i don't know if it's true for everybody but it's, i think for like creative types or writers or artists and musicians and whatever like it's just the only way to stay sane, I think. Yeah. You know, and you know, beer and video games helps too. But man, you're speaking my language, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Your beer and video games. You're definitely speaking my language. <laughs> oh, Any, anything to take your mind off of the. It's true. It's everything. Very true. Yeah. It, you've opened up a bucket of worms, though, sir. What type of games do you like to play? Because I'm very curious. I know comic shows. You're talking about comics, but. I like just it's all related. It's all it's all part of the same thing. Um, it's true. Yeah. Lately, I the Tony Hawk remaster came out. And oh I shit! How is it? Show that it's great. Yeah. It's like, you know, sometimes they remaster a game and it's just a graphical update. Yeah. But in this case, it's like the the remaster version is almost like the game. It's like the memory. It's like a real version of the memory of the game that you remember playing. Oh. You know what I mean? So it's like not a one-to-one graphic upgrade. And I, they did that a couple of years ago with that Tony Hawk HD. Mm-hmm. But this one, you know, they tweak controls and they tweak levels and stuff just to make it more satisfying for the modern player. But it mm-hmm. feels like how you remember it feeling when you played, you know, I was about 15 when that came out probably. So it just, it it feels like my teenage years you know it's just it's really fun and it's just it's great for me who i don't tend to have like long sessions of video games anymore like i just don't have the attention span or the time really you mean to tell me you don't do the eight hours anymore joey yeah just like i I, you know on occasion if there's a game that i'm super into 
I'll play for hours on end. But when I just need a quick, like, half an hour to decompress or something, Tony Hawk, and it's two minutes, two minute runs is just, is perfect. I've it, like, sort of hits that same, that same, uh, plucks the same strings as, like, Mario Kart, you know? Like, it's a yeah. in and out, satisfying, it's fun, and it's just sort of like muscle memory at this point. I love so I've been, that. Been playing yeah. that. I picked up Star Wars Squadrons, um, which is really cool. I just haven't really sunk my teeth into it yet. It's have you played any of it? I played some of the campaign. Okay, I played a bit of the campaign and a bit of multiplayer. Actually, my girlfriend and I have been doing it. We've been doing it on our Twitch, Coder X ninety seven, and then also on YouTube, Dakota Morgan. But sorry, little plug. But we've been doing it on there, and it's been fun. Like it's as a Star Wars fan, I play on Xbox. I don't know what you play on exactly, but I fucking loving it like it's really really cool it's it's honestly if you've always enjoyed you know the space battles and the starships and whatnot in star wars which you kind of have to but if you enjoy this sort of thing like that the dog fights Mm -hmm. oh my god it's it's like what you've always wanted and like you can customize you can get an ewok keychain in your starship (laughs) cockpit like that's pretty rad i didn't know that yeah, and there's a, there's a, you can get like a Darth Vader destroyed helmet or like holograms in there too that are always up in your uh, cockpit and multiplayer. Like you can <laughs> customize your ship colors. I, I, they don't sponsor the show. They should because I'm being honest. I, one of the best games I played in the past few months. And I love that it was forty bucks. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. You're. I was so open. I was like, please be twenty to thirty to forty dollars. Twenty to forty. I'll pay that. I'm not yeah. going to pay $60. I am sorry. I cannot. Like, even if I don't play it obsessively, it's easier to justify that value. Exactly. Um, well, who, oh, to... hold on. Something's important there, here, though. Yeah. Now, when you play multiplayer, I mean, campaign, you do both. But when you play multiplayer and stuff like that, who are you choosing? So you haven't sucked your teeth into it that much, right? Who are you choosing? Are you choosing the In Empire? Like... Or... No, I got to choose, choose the Rebels or choose... New Republic. Yes. Or because, like, even in the game... They they go to great lengths to try to get you to sympathize with the Empire characters or, like, you know, showing off their personalities and what a diverse crew it is. But it's still just, like, I, especially right now in history, like, I just, I'm not going to, I don't feel good about playing yeah. and, and hunting down refugees. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's just, like, a yeah. little, like, they tried, they, they went for it, and I appreciate that, but it, I don't think it totally works, and... You, I could yeah. I could have done without like having to switch back and forth. Yeah, it's, it's a little it's, bit different in multiplayer, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. M- multiplayer is different, but I'm with you on that side. Like they're like, yeah, you want a side of the empire? And like I don't know. All these people are pro genocide. I'm not <laughs> right. really really a fan of this here. Uh, the rebels, please. I'll take more of them. And the, the cockpits are way cooler. I'll, I don't. Know, we we could go in all day about that. Whole thing. It's <laughs> good. Oh my god. But, oh, it's such a good time. But, yeah, so you've been gaming one or two. What do you like to play on? Is it uh, Xbox, um, PC? Uh, yeah, place? An, X- an Xbox mainly. Um, and then a, a Switch for, you know, the Nintendo-specific stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we play a lot of Mario Kart, my wife and I, just, like, after work's over and we're, before we settle into, you know, watching whatever we're watching, we just do a couple of rounds of Mario Kart and it's really divide up the day you know it really Mm -hmm. helps um and xbox i've just been achievements are a huge thing for me Um, yes yeah we relate a lot joey (laughs) (laughs) i'm not lying to you you are like another version of me and also my buddy nick lifelong friend of mine for like 15 years achievements are lifeblood yeah it's just you know it's not even that i'm like oh i need to get all the achievements or this specific thing i need to get it's that I love that it rewards you with a like one of the most satisfying sound effects when it pops up, and uh, yes. I like when they're like cleverly titled, and then it's just like I don't want to switch my main console because I would lose you know the gamer score that I've been working on since two thousand seven or whatever, and it's just you know it's just it's such a dumb thing, but it it really is very satisfying to me. So it's I'm very Xbox true. Xbox through and through. I'm I'm gonna play the sound now, Joe. I'm not gonna lie. I, I have it up on YouTube because now like I'm ready. Well, hold on. That's kind of what it is. I don't know. I'm trying to get it's close. Yeah, that's the 360 one. Is that that's the old 360 one on that one? Um the rare achievement thing. Oh yeah, that one. 
It makes that one's like you feel good. Satisfying. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it makes does. me feel like I haven't just been wasting away the hours, but actually working towards something. Something I didn't know I wanted to be working towards, but still. I don't know if you do this or not. This is turning into the video game channel. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay mm -hmm. with that, too. I am highly okay with that. I don't know if you do it or not, but I have an active war. My buddies, we've been friends, like I said, 15 years, all of us together, and we've been gaming for 15 years, so that's like living through the 40s to the 80s. You've seen a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And we have a constant war, and it tells you now how many you are with the gamer score of getting all the achievements all together. And we're in a constant war of like, oh, who's getting more? Oh, shit, I gotta, play. I gotta download whatever free game there is and just get some random achievements and then uninstall it because the achievements are still there. It's this whole, it's always been that way since we started Xbox. Like, it's the 360. It's been that way. Oh, I don't know if you do that or not, but that adds to the flavor of one of those achievements. I don't do that quite intentionally, but I am a big fan of Game Pass, and that is a great way to also just get random achievements. Like, you download a game that you want to try out, maybe play it for two hours, and it's not for you, but in the meantime, you've picked up, you know, another 100 gamer points or whatever. Yes. So that's oh, not yeah. a bad thing. Um, oh. I do like that the like the interface on Xbox shows you where you are in comparison to your friends in terms yeah. of achievements for certain games. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's not so much a competitive thing for me. It's just like I'm totally content just like unlocking an achievement and just self satisfied like smirk on my face. It's know? true. It's true. Oh, you know, before we get off, because we I have a thing about video games I want to ask you about. But before we get <laughs> to it, though, I do. You're an Xbox guy, so you may relate to this. You may not. I'm in the minority on this with a lot of people I know. But you know what? I miss how integrative and important they were. I miss the Xbox avatars and how big they were. Damn it. I oh, miss oh, man. them. Oh, I can't. They, you can't? I can't follow you down that road. No. Why? <laughs> Joey, no. We were on the wavelength. No. <laughs> we had it. Was it, was just, it, was just, it just felt such a coattail riding thing of the me's that I was just like, okay, I guess I have to make one. But it was just like a blank slate you could get the avatar achievements and that was a special like the avatar award <laughs> achievements and shit that was man damn it i'm still a minority oh well well okay I'm, well here's here's something that does annoy me is so my gamer it's a gamer pick right that's what they call your little like icon yeah yeah so mine carried over from 360 which i it was like uh <laughs> that's from when uh x files i want to believe came out and they had it was just like the it was just like the poster or something, but they yeah. made it into a gamer pick, and so that was my thing. But now on Xbox One, it's like super super small, and you, it like won't it won't become the full size. And the only other options are like you know the preloaded ones that they have on there, or to like upload your own pick through some very complicated system that yeah. I can't figure out. Yeah. So now I just have like this weird little X Files logo inside of a giant circle, and it's it's very irritating to me. It's like you could have such a cool thing, and it used to be so <laughs> cool. Then you had to get old and suck. And yeah, like, Damn basically. It. Damn it. Oh, I mean, man. that's what most things come down to these days. When I'm like complaining uh, about something, it's like maybe uh, I think the problem is just me. Yeah, I felt that a lot. I've I yeah with comics, with books, movies, and stuff like that, and gaming a little bit too. I felt I'm like man. <laughs> oh, when you, when you there, I do want to get to this. I do have a question though. It kind of leads to this, but when okay. you get older, though, I, I have a strange like with comics and with video games. When you're in both those fandoms, just those alone, we'll just stick with those two. It feels like you get older, like you feel older than you are if you started way back when. Because I don't, I'm only 23, but I started gaming when I was, I'll be like six, mm -hmm. and I've been going since then. Right. So, and maybe even five, actually, too. Doing like the old Game Boy where you had to plug in a light, a light thing so it could shine light on the damn screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, those are the things. Like, I don't know how you old, how old you are exactly, but you know, it feels like you've gone, we've been through so much history and so much like evolution that we just feel so much older than we actually are when it comes to comics, too. And yeah, for it, sure. It just feels like that. Am I wrong? Or do you, do you feel that as well? No, you're right. And as someone who is 35, I can tell you it's only to get worse. <laughs> Son of a so, bitch. So you feel that now. And you know what, though? I When I was 23, I also remember feeling that way, which, yeah. like, in retrospect was 
not as severe as maybe I thought it was, but you know, from your own point of view, it's like, I think it's the, especially in video games, because it's a technology that evolves so fast, especially now where it's, you know, at least when I was a kid growing up with the NES, it felt like we had that forever before we got the Super Nintendo. And then we had that forever before the N64 came out. But really it was, I don't know, what, like five years probably? NES had a little bit of a, a longer lifespan, but from like Super Nintendo to N64 was only five years, which is about the same amount of time. It's just that days are so much longer when you're younger. Yeah. Right? Like every day feels like, infinite possibilities and now it's like i wake up and then snap of the fingers and it's time for bed <laughs> you know what i mean it, it, so like, yeah oh yeah I feel it's so. really true that thing of getting older and just days start flying by um but in the context of video games it just there's so much that happens so many trends that come in and out so quickly um like you know the rhythm games is a great example like how hot that was for really only three or four years Mm -hmm. But it was such like a huge impact, and especially probably for you, you must have been what like twelve or something when that was yeah going on. yeah yeah the rhythm games and stuff like that. I mean, when you say rhythm games, you're like talking like DJ Hero, Guitar Hero. That's what right, all yeah. the classic instruments and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. And, like it, it went from like the hot new thing to there being piles of discarded instruments within you like can five years, go to you know? goodwill and there's so many dj hero not dj hero dj hero became rare apparently it's fucking expensive to get one too if you want to get one but yeah. and the <laughs> rare shit yeah I, I had one when i was a kid i'm like dj hero and he felt awesome with doing that let me tell you that was cool but if you had like guitar hero you go to like a goodwill or anything like salvation army or anything like that you'll find at least one to maybe three guitar hero guitars in there like torn yeah. the shit, but it's still like it. It makes you feel kind of sad, but I it kind of though I wanted to ask you before I forget I keep losing it, but before I wanted to ask you this as a writer who loves video games because I often don't get people like us on the show is have video games as a fellow writer has video games influenced your work in books and comics like because it's influenced mine growing oh, yeah, up and sure. then now even to today I think it has, but it, for you it's a yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, um, but that's also true of like. I think that anything that you consume storytelling wise is going to influence you whether you think so or not. But I do think that games in particular have had a real like important effect on me, particularly in terms of world building. Um, the first example that comes to mind is Bioshock, which is oh my one of my, my favorite games of all time. Yes, I have I have a little sister up here actually. It's I have a little mini Coco <laughs> Dorbs, like a little sister. She's got her like thing on there yeah she's got like a little syringe oh yeah but i think that's a great example of a game that really just i can't speak to if it was actually the first to do this or not but like the way in which the story is laid out through the the tapes that you find but like they'll they'll play as you continue to walk around the world it doesn't force you to stop and go to a menu screen and like listen to it yeah um, and it's often shed some light on whatever part of the story that you're in um, in addition to just like the great environment and just the backstory and the the whole twist at the end like all that stuff is great but it was really the world building like i just you just can you get a sense of that whole world more than you do in most games like that you play for a shorter amount of time it, it you know yeah I mean? oh yeah oh 100 and i think there's something about it too because obviously film and television affect as of us as writers and what we do like and maybe inspiration ideas or something like that click but in especially and for world building especially video games i think you you're right they do that more by oh god we could talk about bioshock all day too but <laughs> we really could holy shit um infinite i love it but one two two eh. but we had so much like i think it's the difference is, is when you play when it's a good world building and also you play you are the character because you're playing the character like when you are playing this character going through a world building experience it kind of gives you a better perspective of how to build your own world almost when you're looking through the eyes of a character he she it whatever the hell it is in whatever world it is especially bioshock and world building that it does it makes it gives you it enlightens you i think of how to 
build your own world and how right. to create like the details that do matter like look through and i think it gives you the perspective of a when you're writing a book or when you're writing a comic and i tend to do this a lot with my characters when especially if it's like a single thing and it's a one character going through something or doing something look through it through their eyes what mm -hmm. are they going to see what are they feeling like what is going on in the world around them and what are they going on as a character like kind of look through their eyes and i would not have had that if it wasn't for gaming yeah for sure and i think to that point you know the things that i remember about Bioshock is almost never, you know, the upgrades or the combat or the actual gameplay. It's all story related. Yes. Yeah. You know? And I think oh, that's yeah. an important takeaway is that like the feeling and the immersion is more important to me personally than like how innovative the gameplay is. And like that's obviously important because if it plays like shit, you're not going to be able to focus. Mm -hmm. um, but all the games that I love, I find. I'm always remembering story details and environments rather than like, oh, the sequence where I had to do this thing was super fun. And of course there is some of that, but the things that I like really latch onto are all related to story, which I think is how I approach any of my own stuff. You so, know, like I want yeah. I want that memory to to be like, oh, that was such a good story. Exactly. Yeah. And for what Bioshock was to you, and I got a game that may actually do it better, almost, in a sense here, I mean, is Fallout. I love okay. my two favorite, Fallout and Halo. To me, Fallout mm. does that as well, too, like what Bioshock does, and developing a world and characters, and makes and enlighten you, like, of how, how characters would interact with each other, you know, how one thing affects another, and the world building and such like that. I believe, at least in my take, Fallout does that very, very well. And it shows you all of this stuff. Like, I think in comics, I know a few people who are big Fallout fans. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, Fallout inspired me a little bit. And I believe seeing Twitter posts about this one day. And oh, God, a while ago. And Fallout, like, affects you in that sense of, like, telling stories, you know, building the world and such. Like that too. Like, these things where people think, oh, they're just mindless video games. Not really. Like, they help us writers out and probably artists, too, out a fucking lot, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't played too much Fallout, but that's also like one of the, I, you know, the flip side to my story driven part is like, I also thrive when it's like eight to 10 hours, <laughs> like an Uncharted yeah. blank is like perfect for me or a Tomb Raider. Like but that's like, get me in and get me out. But like the more there is to explore and stuff, the harder time I have, like really drilling down into the story part of it because I'm just mm. not huge on exploration and and that sort of thing. The exception I would say is like the Red Dead Redemption games, those oh, for yeah. some reason that I can just like lose myself in or Zelda. Um yeah. but but yeah, I I hear you. And you know, I think it's just really just anything that you anything that you really love and are impacted by, I think is just going to spill out into whatever you choose to do whether it's writing or drawing or anything like that true it's very true now i'm curious because you you're smart as hell with writing obviously you've done a, a lot of work here and i'm curious is how did you become a writer because i always say it is origin stories matter and that's why i always like asking people they're like oh it's cliche <laughs> like no it fucking matters because one person's origin story can affect another it could breathe they're the seeds that plant the tree yeah or like sure. a tree technically like how did you get started as a writer though i mean if we're going way back, I guess it's just I has just always been interested in, you know, I've always been a very active reader. Um, I've always loved comics. I've always loved books. Um, and then just from a young age, we just write stories, you know, um, whether it was for school or just for my mom to read and keep her entertained. Um, lots of like making up my own sort of little worlds, usually like a riff on Power Rangers or something. It was just like Earth Defenders or, you know, the the same, but like my own version of it. And just mm. like creating these really rich stories that, you know, during playtime after school or whatever, I would usually by myself just like continue each day. So almost mm. like a serialized playtime thing. And I think that's where it started. But in terms of like, trying to do it professionally um so in high school you know still continuing to write my own stuff but it's really in high school i decided i wanted to go to film school um, after high school and so i did that 
and in film school, you know, it was, you didn't have to choose a concentration at the school that I went to. It was, you know, you take a directing class, you do cinematography and editing, like you sort of do it all to be as well-rounded as you can. But the part of the experience I found myself enjoying the most was the screenwriting portion. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's sort of where I decided, okay, I think writing is the thing I want to concentrate on. Not to say that I don't want to, you know, direct at some point or, or whatever, but that's sort of where I honed in on that specific thing. And then sub, uh, subsequently, I also had a class in school that was all comics related, um, which sort of the first semester was reading, you know, graphic novels like Mouse and Blankets and um, Jimmy Corrigan and like all these sort of really influential works that then The second semester was a making comics class that was essentially going through, you know, Scott McCloud's understanding comics and digging into that and sort of doing our own, uh, our own work from everything from like strips, like comic strips to five page adaptations of a short story, you know, just like doing all of our own stuff. And that's where I was like, oh shit, this is what I want to do. Like I'd always loved comics. Um, growing up, a huge superhero comics reader, then high school, college, got into, you know, the Vertigo stuff and realized nice. that comics, comics were more than just superheroes. Um, but it was in college in that class that I was like, comics are the greatest medium in the world yeah. because they can do anything and the budget is unlimited. Oh, you know, the, I just literally talked about this with someone the other day. I'm not mm-hmm. even kidding you about budget on that. It's true. Like, also, by the way, that's a hell of an origin story. But two is you're right. That's I want to stop. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But it's it's, no, it's okay. the truth there of there is no budget. There is no restrictions in comics. Like you can do whatever you want. The only budget yeah. is like how much you want to pay the artist and writer. That's it. Like that's yeah. that's it. That you, you can make that trillion dollar movie a reality which yeah, i think and it, it, yeah and it took hollywood forever to discover that to be honest here they're like holy shit there's a gold mine of stories here yeah we've known that for so many years like we're like for decades where the hell have you guys been yeah just some of the wildest shit of all time is in comics and you know i they do they have caught on eventually hollywood or whoever um and i think a side effect of that is like some people who are like okay we'll just make it a comic you know as like this sort of backdoor into making movies but that has never really interested me um you know if one of my works gets optioned or adapted or whatever that's great but like i I don't know i'm kind of a i'm somewhat of a believer of like the original medium is where is like the canon piece of it do you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so like if something if i create a comic that's the that's like the the rosetta stone or whatever to me and then like anything else is just sort of like riffing off of what was already done and that's true of like a a movie that becomes a comic or becomes a game or whatever i don't know it's true i mean you just we live in a world though where almost everything is being turned into something like i know it was announced god there's some stuff that i i really hope like there's some that well, Saga's never going to be made into one. I don't know if you know that book or not, but it's never going to be made into a TV show, which is good. You know, there's those ones that are like, yeah, we cannot make this in a movie or TV show because it's so vulgar, but it's such right. a good story. And it's like, yeah, there's that. Like, shit, Vertigo, you mentioned that one. Like, there's one, I remember reading it, uh, I started reading last year, and I finished it finally. Oh, God, a few, actually a while ago now. Nothing anymore. But... <clears throat> I was reading DMZ. DMZ Mm -hmm. is going to be an HBO TV show now. Right. Don't know when, don't know how, but it's going to be an HBO TV show. And I'm like, everything's being made. If you're making DMZ from Vertigo, which, by the way, is an amazing series. Everyone check it out. Like, when you turn that series into a TV show, then you've done everything. I I think there's some things you're never going to be able to touch. But, you know, writing for stuff, I think you need to talk about, too, was... That writing for the backdoor pilot for a TV show or a movie, I think is a faulty, I will go on record and say, it's a faulty way of writing your comic because 
you're focused not on the story at hand as much as you sh- as you could be because you're like I'm focusing on oh this would make good for a TV show or a movie like cool it's awesome it make it's made into that if it does but you're making a comic you're not making that TV script right now or that movie script that's in the future you if that happens you got to right. focus on just making the comic which a lot of people tend to forget because they all want the the new Marvel deal or they want that sort of sort of shit with that like. I got a project working on right now that's a tie-in. I cannot say anything. I got to watch how I word this. I got a pro- tie-in right now that's in the one of my comics. And I never made it for that, even though I knew it was a huge possibility of getting it. But I never made it for that. And now I'm going back in the scripts that haven't come out yet and changing it to tie in with this thing. That's the best I can say that. But, you know, we go back and take a look. Those scripts already turned in. Like that's the thing. Like you just go back and take a look. Oh, okay, we can do this and this and this. But I'm I've gone on record and said that now. So whether people hate me for it or not, I don't know. But I think that's I mean, a faulty way of doing it. Is I, just, it. I think it's just like if you have a screenplay and you want to turn it into a comic so you can show whoever that it's like a viable property, fine. But like at least make it a comic. You know what I mean? Don't yeah. hand the artist your screenplay and be like adapt this because then really they're the writer and the artist of that they're, you're not contributing much other than like the bones of the story because it's such a different medium that you you have to change things you have to be specific for comics it's not a one-to-one adaptation and i guess that's what i was trying to get at but yeah no i got you i got you well there's an adaptation though that i think does work very well and it kind of goes into what we we're talking about before video adaptations of comics oh that's the best i think I, but Honestly, I'd rather take a video game adaptation of a comic book series and more than a movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see that. I think there's definitely some that are, that are great. But I think, you know, comics just in general, whether it's superhero or otherwise, there's just so much to draw from that yeah. you can really adapt it to any medium. But I don't think it's necessarily true vice the other way, you know? I don't know. It's hard. It's... And the, at the end of the day, like if you write, if you enjoy what you're writing and you're mm-hmm. writing it for the medium on which it's going to appear, then I think that's the best that any of us can do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like we're here as writers for comics. I mean, you've done book books too, though, if I remember correctly, right? Um, none that have been come out yet, but yeah. Oh I'm, shit! I, <laughs> I'm actually finishing my third um, novel right now. No, nice. not write the second, but like probably within the month, it should be. That first draft should be done. Nice. Um, I, yeah, I which was, is yeah. a whole other can of worms. Of just, yeah, yeah, it's a whole other can of worms like there. Skills, but, yeah, um, it is. And I've been, I, I wanted to ask you about that actually because currently, oh God, how can I talk about this too? Uh, I have a novel in development as well. Right now, I'm working with people around the globe on it. It's a science book. And the thing I've been focusing on with that one is like, I've really seen the differences though in writing because. I've written for film, I've written for comics, but then going from comics to a novel, that's been interesting, I think. How's that been for yeah. you? Has it been interesting? Has it been easy, hard? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty used to it now, but my first novel was particularly difficult, um, especially because that one, after talking about these adaptations and things, that was like, the, my first novel was a story idea that I had pitched as a comic and didn't go anywhere. And then like, I just kind oh. of kept coming back to it. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to develop, you know, turn this into a novel. And so like that one had particular things that I was holding on to from the comic version that mm-hmm. I found difficult to, you know, didn't quite translate into a novel just because it's just such a different experience. Yeah. Um, but it, it is definitely different. It's, definitely a different set of skills i think um but it's just like with anything the more that you do it the more used to it you get um and that's not to say it gets any easier because it's as soon as i start a new project i'm just like i don't fucking remember how to do this at all (laughs) yeah i'm glad i'm not alone in that feeling because i feel like oh my god was i just shit at this or did i just like when you don't remember it when you start a new project like oh damn oh no like, yeah, I, I, it's this whole thing with it, but I'm glad, like, well, I will put on a record, though, and say I've honestly found it easier going from comics to film than comics to novel. 
Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's they're both um, visual mediums, whereas like prose, it's it's all on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like comics and and movies or TV, you're writing for someone else to interpret what you're saying and that thing is the final product whereas a book is like the words of the final product and that all falls on you so if it sucks yeah. it's your fault you know yeah <laughs> that is true that is very true that is very true like a terrible comic script or a terrible uh, screenplay can be made into like a pretty good movie or a pretty good or at least pretty comic but yeah. that's not true of a novel no well, then again, though, how many times do we see it that it's the novel's way better than the book or better than the movie? Like, I admitted the other day, I was like, you know what? I kind of like Jurassic Park the book a lot better than Jurassic Park the movie, and I wow, love really? the movie. I, I, you know what, though? It's a tough fucking gamble, but I really think so. Like, Lost World, Lost World actually is more on that camper because Lost World the book is almost better than Lost World the movie, and I'm a huge fan of all of it. Like, I have literally a Jurassic shelf full of dinosaur collectibles I have. And shit, I worked in paleontology because of it. But I think the book is almost better than the movies. I can agree with you on Lost World. Uh, so yeah, Jurassic Park. The Jurassic Park movie is tough on that one. I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, maybe. But Lost World, I definitely think more is the book is better than the movie. And I love the movie, though. There's also, like, I don't know. That, that whole conversation is interesting because, for example, you know, it's October, obviously. And I'm watching, I have a whole calendar of horror movies that I'm I'm watching this month, and my favorite yeah. horror movie of all time is Kubrick's The Shining. Oh, yes. So, like, that whole thing is interesting to me because I, I'm a huge Stephen King fan, and notoriously, he hates The Shining adaptation because it changes so much from the book. Mm -hmm. but the book is also great in its own way. It's just very different. And I think what's interesting about that whole situation is Dr. Sleep came out last year, and, you know, Mike Flanagan is a filmmaker I really like. And Dr. Sleep is a great adaptation of the Dr. Sleep novel. But I have friends who, like, love The Shining, the Kubrick Shining, and hated Dr. Sleep and, like, yeah. don't, like the, don't like the book, you know. And I get that, but it was interesting for me to see Dr. Sleep and be like, oh, this is a great adaptation of the King book, while it's nowhere near as terrifying or riveting as Kubrick's The Shining, it's still a good adaptation of the book, but it's like kind of a shitty sequel to The Shining. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's both weird. things at once. Yeah, it's it's one of those, not all the time do you get that, but it's, it is one of those weird things where it's, as you just said, like it is all those things at once of like, yay, nay, yay, nay. Although I'm on the side, if the creator doesn't like it, then eh. then you might want to take the consideration. But then again, it's Stephen King. I love the man to death. He's super cool. So who knows? Like with him on it, though, I don't know. I love the movie too. I don't. It's 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 one of these first world problems. It really is. Like we're like, fuck. I like this. Like, oh damn it. What about this? Like it's it is one of those things. And it. I don't think very rarely do you get it that often anymore. Like we well, got it with Doctor just... Sleep, but you don't see that situation as much anymore. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I think it just comes down to the individual. Like, you just have to learn to, you don't have to, but I've learned to sort of compartmentalize almost in terms of, like, this thing, like, The Shining is great on its own, and it's perfect in that way. Yeah. And knowing that there's this movie sequel that is an adaptation of The Shining's book sequel that isn't quite as on par with those, like, the chill factor of the first movie doesn't mean that that movie is any less good just because it doesn't compare favorably to this original thing. So that's it's true. just, you just have to, at least that's what I do, is just kind of take each thing on its own and how it compares. And some things it's hard to do that. Like I think superhero comics is a good example because it's one running story for 80 years, basically. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's almost impossible not to compare things to things that have come before, or if it's supposed to be a sequel, or building on something, it's just a little harder for me to do that. But mm. in general, I think taking things on their own is the only way to really be satisfied with everything that you're consuming. Oh my God, yeah, that's it. That's the perfect way to go about it. Like it, There is a lot of things to consume too. Like we have so many comics, we have so too many- much, I would argue. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, that's true. We have a lot of shit to consume. Like TV shows and film especially, like, 
uh, we have so much. I'm I'm almost with I'm with you in the sense of we have too much TV shows. I uh, there's so much to keep up on. I'm trying to watch things my girlfriend hasn't seen before. Shout out to you, Michaela. I love you. But we have, like just things she's never seen before, things I've she's seen I've never seen before. Like there's so much to do, and I yeah. Uh, comics wise though, is there too much or is there not? Because I think comics wise there used to be. But we're the twenty twenty has been a weird year to use this example on. But I think like in the past year, two years, we've we've really mellowed out, and there's a good amount of comics that's really easily I think easily readable. So it's not too many in the world. And but there's a lot of indie. There's a lot a lot of indie. But if you're just going for the big two, there's not that much of those. And then Image and all them they have I think a steady amount. Am I wrong in that? What do you think? Or no? Because so I'm honest here, because I think it's an okay amount of comics out now. So I know I just said that I think there's too much content in TV in the world, but I think comics are the, the exception where there will never be enough. Really? Granted, like there's, and this is true of, of all things, but like there's no way any of us will ever read or watch or do everything we want to do before we're dead, right? That's true. So like, but I think comics is such a gateway for so many people whether it's to reading or to you know learning that you are super into fantasy or sci-fi mm. or into art whether it's comic book art or fine art or whatever comics are such a gateway for so many people to different paths and i think that the more comics that we have and the more diversity that we have within the types of comics that we're reading both from genre and and creators from different backgrounds and all that stuff is only a good thing because that means it's just going to reach somebody that comics five years ago may not have. And then subsequently the cycle starts over where they are inspired and start creating their own stuff and the whole thing just keeps going. And I guess that can be true for any medium, but for me, like it all starts with reading and I think comics are such an important way to get kids in particular to just be into reading yeah you know oh, so yeah. I, I think the more that we have the better it can be it's yeah. harder on us as a consumer maybe to like yeah. budget yeah <laughs> like, oh, fuck, budget is, that's, yeah but, that's uh, the word yeah but i think it's important that there's just so many different options it's true and there is a lot like i i still go to the comic book store every now and then too because budgetary and you know when i have time because holy sure. hell but when when you go to the comic book store, right, anytime really in the past lately, in the past year or two, is you take a look, look at all those books around. You're actually absolutely right. Like there is so much to do and there can never be enough. Like I think there's just so much to choose from now. Like there is a what was the saying before? Somebody said it. I don't know who, and then it was thrown around the circuit for a long time, was there is a comic book for everybody. No matter who you are, no matter what your tastes are. No matter what is going like, we have horror, we have romance, we have superheroes, we have war, we have suspense, we have thriller, we have murder. Like, we have everything in comics. Like, there is a comic book for everybody. Like, I write seven different books. None of them are really the same. There's giant monsters, space, powers, police. Like, there's um, other, mon like, it it's huge. It it's insane. Dinosaurs is one. You know, it's all this crazy stuff. Like, there is a comic book for every type of genre, no matter how small or large. Yeah, absolutely. Man, it makes it beautiful, dude. It, it's what really makes, I think, the genre beautiful. I love being a part of it. I really do. And, you know, I love being a part fan and worker-wise. It's, it's nice. It's nice. But Comics are the best. Yeah, amen to that, man. Comics and video games and beer. Mm -hmm. It's the way to go. <laughs> it's definitely the way to go. Uh, so we are coming near the end of the show, though, here, Joey, and I definitely want to say thank you for coming on the podcast, man. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. It's always fun to talk about the things that we like. Of course. Oh, fuck yeah. It's, it's much, much needed these days. It really is in this year to talk about good things and things you love. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really all any of us can do at this point, in addition to, you know, staying aware and and contributing where we can in larger society but i think for our own sanity it's important to you know have conversations about fun stuff and 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 stories that we love and it's just i think it helps a lot and it does i know i need it so <laughs> oh god yeah we all oh fuck we all do 
like, you know, man, I'm I'm glad to have you on here, but this is also the point where I like to give it to you guys, like my guests and whatnot, because I like to let people plug their stuff because I'm a big supporter of helping out fellow creators. So plug away, man. Do you have anything you can talk about that's coming out for people to check out, where they can find you on social media, that sort of stuff to help you out? Um, there's nothing that I can plug that's upcoming. Well, but, shit. Uh, but I can say you can find all of my books on Comixology. Um, you can just search for Joey Esposito or you can find my creator own books like footprints and pawn shop or captain ultimate those are all available um, i'm on social media at joey esposito on most platforms and you can oh you can also i so something that i did in quarantine was i made an album <laughs> this oh. you know uh you know i've always played in bands and stuff but once quarantine happened i was like all right i i need something to do that like i can put out and get instant gratification from and so i made a record it's called the band is called radmobile Ooh. which is a reference to an old video game and also a deep cut encino man reference yeah. um and the album is called always a bummer and you can get it on spotify or apple music or wherever or you can go to Bandcamp and find it and buy it for like seven bucks what type of genre is this though so people know um it's like uh I would say it's it's punk. Um, really? Oh, you know, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, rock, grungy, punk skate music, maybe. <laughs> ah, so early Lincoln Park. Uh, Ooh, I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. But oh shit! Okay, <laughs> so, damn it. But wow. um, but yeah, I, it's you know you get it's on all the streaming platforms, so check it out. It's free. Sweet, sweet. Well, th uh, thank you, good man. And yeah, I'm definitely have to check that out because. Honestly, though, like you had the time and you made use of it, and I love that. I'll support it's you. All, yeah. It's all we can do. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Well, thank you, good man. Like I said, thank you for coming on the show, and I want to get on a record too. You can come back anytime. You want to support anything? You got an upcoming project or anything like that? You're like I right. need some help. You, I'll have, are... have some stuff to talk about eventually. So um, I'll definitely, definitely let you know. And I really appreciate it. Of course, thank you, Joey. And you have yourself a good rest of the day. All right. All right, you too, man. Take care. Thank you. Bye.